Welcome to episode 5. My name is Peter and this is my humble garage where we take apart, rebuild and put back on the road one lovely crash damaged Audi TT Mark III. As you can see sitting right next to me is an engine that we pulled out from the car last week. So in this episode we are going to start stripping out everything that is damaged from the crash off of the engine as well as taking some parts uh, off of the engine that we are going to replace as a preventative maintenance whilst we are in there, you know how they say it. So as we have easy access we are going to replace most of the parts so when we put the, car, the, the engine back into the car one, one day, hopefully, fingers crossed, it is going to work as a brand new engine. But we, before we start working on the engine, I want to show you a couple of things right behind you that we need to take care of first before we can uh, send the chassis off to body shop to do their work and so we can concentrate on working on the engine alone. So let's get started. So here we are inside the engine bay. Obviously I have removed the subframe last night and I did it off camera, sorry, but it was just uh, a matter of pulling everything, the couple of screws that were already loose out and then just letting everything drop down. The only important thing is I've showed you in a previous episode there is a small screw that is supposed to pinch the steering column to the steering rack and it sits in the cabin behind where the brake pedal would be and you need to remove that screw completely in order to drop the steering rack out of the car. Doesn't seem logical uh, because it looks like a pinch bolt, it isn't, you have to remove it. Other than that, I think I'm going to remove the brake booster and this insulation as well, so there's really nothing left in the engine compartment um, for the body shop to have to remove in order to start working on the car. Also, I want to remove the rear sway bar because I bought a slightly thicker one, also OEM Volkswagen Audi. So that is a sneaky OEM plus upgrade I like to do on my cars. In order to do that, we need to take the small thin one out. And I know most of you are already sick of seeing the interior of this car as we have been here for way too long. And I thought I was finished. I thought I stripped everything out. I thought that twice and I was wrong both of the times because yeah, we need to strip everything, everything out. So the only thing that's left is a bare chassis, especially on the front side. So there is a dashboard carrier which is a steel tube that goes across the car. Behind that is the AC, heater, core, basically the, your heating and cooling system of the car and it runs all the way through to the passenger behind the glove compartment and you saw in the last episode we have a small crack on the plastic housing of the fan so that is the reason we have to remove everything. But also I think it's going to make a much easier job for the body shop to weld, work or whatever on the front of the car. I am really scared of doing this because there is a couple million screws and yeah screws aren't the issue but the cabling, the routing of the cabling needs to be right when you put everything back together because if it's not some cables won't be able to reach to the dedicated spot and yeah, I really don't want to take this dashboard out a couple of times. So we need to make sure we do this right. We are going to time lapse it because I, I assume you don't want to watch a couple of hours worth of me swearing and sweating. But I'm going to wear, be wearing a second camera on top of my head in case you've really interested in um, detailed view of removing this. But that is the main task for now. Once we remove that and the rear sway bar, then we can start work in, uh, start work on the engine. Let's go.
done. I am done in a good way as taking this out actually is much easier than expected. There's only a couple thousand clips to clip the cables in. And once you undone all those, there's a couple of screws. Um, in my case, obviously two screws down here, two screws on both on this side, one screw on this side. And then there is one screw that is um, that you have to remove the windshield wiper motor uh, first. Obviously, <laughs> I'm getting tired. And then you can remove the screw from the uh, outer side in order to release the frame. And the frame goes out together with the air conditioning unit. And I think that if I'm not mistaken, I have managed to undo every single clip. I have no idea just how heavy this is going to be. thought this a bit better through before trying to uh, before trying to uh, before trying to uh, I just remove it. You see? Easy peasy. Easy peasy. Lemon, lemon squeezy. I have squeezed every single lemon. There is to be squeezed. Oh my goodness. done even though there's still a couple of things that we need to remove such as aha I have forgotten to remove the drain plug drain pipe for the climate control module or the climate control system um, yeah, and I wanted to try and remove this sponge like so because of course we are going to they are going to have to take the glass out so it's going to be much easier for them to do it this way. Now we have a much better view of the brake pedal which we were struggling with before, so maybe we can release this uh, ball joint and separate the brake pedal of the brake servo or the brake booster. And I'm going to have to put all of this back in and... You know I already have night nightmares thinking about it, but it's going to be fun, right? Of course I'm not going to leave you with just one angle. This isn't a usual half-ass YouTube video or YouTube channel for that matter. Whew. Let me just hop in in this lovely half interior and there it is. A jungle of cables and then one thing that goes on the back side which I have to be quite honest damaged to some extent just this plastic tunnel which uh, houses the cables for airbag control module what we are left with so it sits like this and 
There are two branches, one that goes, uh, like actually a couple of branches, one that goes underneath, couple that go down here. This is the box with the fuses and control modules for the body, electronics and some other stuff. And then on this side we have a wiring for head unit and wiring for head unit. That doesn't make any sense. Trust me, I don't know what I'm talking. A couple of things left to remove. I am going to try to remove this sound insulation as well. And I know there are a couple of fastening points over here. Maybe we can just skip them, skip over them uh, politely. Yes, respectfully. There we go. That will leave us with really nice surface to work with. Or I should probably remove that thing as well. We'll see, we'll see. We have an issue with removing the brakes because we need a special tool to undo the bolt joint behind the brake pedal. Other than that, pretty much everything's out. So let me show you how the air conditioning module looks like. Here we are. So. Actually not that heavy. This is the frame that holds the whole dashboard inside of the car. This is the screw that you need to undo from the front side underneath the windshield, behind the windshield wiper motors. Um, and the reason why we had to remove all of this is Excuse the view of my behind for a second. There we go. Is because this lower part is what's broken. So this is where we have the crack on the front where this thing mounts to this frame and you cannot get it out any other way rather than this. This on the other hand is going to allow me to completely clean the insides of these vents and these flaps and whatever there is inside. So the ventilation unit is going to be better than brand new when we are done with it. And I'm going to make sure to also sound that deaden or sound insulate most of these ducts and ventilation pipes, whatnot. I'm going to check every servo motor um, I am also going to lubricate every single servo motor and every single pivoting point so we know the car is going to run smoothly and nicely for many years to come and many years to enjoy. So this concluded means I'm going to have to separate those two parts of course but this means that we are now left with only engine to work on with. I don't have great news. I don't even have, have good news. Matter of fact is I don't know just how bad of a news this is. As you can see I stripped out a little bit more than what we saw last time. I did the same on the interior and that's where I found out what I didn't want to find out. So let me show you. Apart from the obvious that now we have everything stripped out of the interior of the car, I must admit I have never been this deep into a re rebuild and now I'm starting to be a bit scared. I know it will take some time and I will put all of this back together, no issue there, but the issue that I'm having is this over here. So this is basically a, not a crack, but this is a kink in the center tunnel of the chassis. As you can see, this is where the paint flaked off 
over here this is also not how it's supposed to be so this thing is basically also bent which i really didn't count on as well as this firewall has a really nice kink as well so it is bent as well also i am not sure but i think this wall over here also has a small bend However, I am not quite sure, so I can't tell. What does this mean is that uh, impact has gone much further down the chassis that I've expected um, first, because I thought only the leg of the chassis is bent, so that's no issue. But I really didn't like what I found right here. And I don't know how much of a difference it's going to make for the body shop, I guess we'll have to wait and find out because for example this over here looks completely straight the A pillar looks completely straight you can close the door the passenger door and there is no difference in a gap so I think the A pillar isn't really damaged but how has this happened that the damage has gone all the way here have no idea what I have done so far is I have removed everything from the under the car, so the um, uh, underfloor covers, underfloor protection. I have removed the lines for the brakes. I have also removed the brake booster, which was an exceptional pain to get out because it was not only screwed down, but also with a double sticky tape glued onto the chassis, so it was like a nightmare of a job. Almost the worst job so far. Anyways, uh, the plan for now is I have freed up everything inside of the car. I have freed up most of the things on the front. I realized it would be a great idea to remove the exhaust, downpipe, downpipe all the way to the rear, as far as it goes to the back and try to remove the drive shaft as well. Because if they are going to try to repair the tunnel, they will have to have a free access to be able to do that. So yeah, that's the things planned. The exhaust pipe is connected with a clamp, which has two 13 millimeter screws that are rusty as hell. I managed to get one of them turning and I slipped the other one so I'm probably going to have to cut them and order a new clamp not that I wanted any more of the extra cost but I think for now I'm going to leave that and concentrate myself on starting removing everything that's damaged from the engine I am going to time lapse the whole process because it, I don't know just how long it's going to take but the plan is, like I said, everything that is damaged and broken has to come off. That means both of the CV joints, everything that's obvious on this side, so this housing for the gearbox filter, this pipe going from the turbine all the way down to the front of the car to the intercooler, it is also broken. All of the things on the front side that are broken as well, you know I don't like handheld because it's always shaky as my hands are shaking any time every uh, as my hands are always shaking but I just want to make sure you have the nice nice view so everything that is broken will come off of the engine I'm also going to remove the intake manifold because I want to do the carbon build up cleanup the carbon build up cleaning because this engine does not have injectors in the ports, it only has direct injection. So that means that it suffers from the carbon buildup in the interior intake po ports. Going then, this tube also needs to come out all the way to the turbine or the compressor. Most probably going to remove ignition coils and yeah probably sparks a bit later but then there is a another CV joint over here that also needs to come out probably remove the engine 
mount as well. Let me just quickly go around. Oh, we can go even wider. Mm, I think that's it for now. There's not much broken on the engine. That's what I told you earlier that I'm really happy at least so far. Fingers crossed there's nothing much. almost all the way down to stripping the front differential off uh, when I realized I've removed all of the bolts for, for the last one I had to lift the engine up so I can reach the, the fourth screw. There is a bracket that, hold, that is um, attached to the engine block so there's two additional screws which I didn't find on the new unit that I, new second-hand unit that I bought. Then I went ahead and peeked through this hole. Let me show you where it is. This is where the hole is at. So passenger side, all the way down there and you can see it is as thin as the tip of my finger. And found out there is a Allen, I think it's an 8 millimeter Allen screw uh, that is this all the way in, deep inside. So I need to get myself a 8 millimeter Allen that is longer than 30 centimeters, just so I can be able to undo the screw to get this thing out. So another Audi specialty tool that we will have to order because um, the hole is not thick enough for my extensions to go all the way through. That means we will have to pause on that for a second until the next time I come and get the tool. Uh, we can continue working on the other small bits and pieces on the car that I can reach and hopefully unscrew. One more thing down the drain. I have used the key. <laughs> I have used the ingle grinder again, and I have just cut this clamp for the exhaust pipe straight out. That means that if I got everything right, which let's face it, of course I did, we are going to be. Uh, Yes! The fall of success. Not only one, but we got two things out. One thing at a time. One day at a time. Down pipe. With the center muffler. Out. So let's see where we can put it. So the flex pipe does not get damaged. I don't know why I did that. Anyways, this thing is also out. We'll leave it here for now. But it's off to the storage very soon. Now, now what? 
That is a great question. Question. Uh, I think the next thing to get out is this, the center bearing, the middle bearing, the bearing for the drive shaft. Then the only thing that's left is the drive shaft uh, connection between the rear differential and the drive shaft. And then we can slide the drive shaft out, but we'll think about that later. Now, most probably, it's not really that cold. I'm just really hot from all the hard work that I've done. I mean, it is a bit cold, but nevertheless. Drive shaft, next. So, this is the beautiful cut that I have made. Let's see which is the best angle. There it is. Zip, straight out. And those are the two 13 mils. You can see, You can see the sorry state they are in, right? They look terrible and there is no way I could, get, I could ever get that out. Especially because they don't have a head on this side, so they just go all the way around. So yeah, another thing to get new, straight from Audi, there is a part number on it. We'll need to check it out. One more thing I wanted to show you. Another Wibbly Wobbly production. Okay, let down under the car. This is an exclusive view of under the car. So you can see uh, there's where the motor connects to the drive shaft. Let me see if we can this is the main, the, the central bearing, and it goes all the way above the exhaust pipe and bolts. Why do we have lights if we cannot see anything? And bolts straight to the rear differential. So those three screws are next on our list. But before we do those three, I think we'll do these four. Zap them right out and let everything kind of sway down on the ground until we do that. Yeah. I hope at least this is going to be a straight out job. Four nuts. One, two, three, and why am I in a sport mode? Oh. Well, that was a bit too dramatic. It just went flying down there. Okay. Oh, this thing is broken as well. Lovely. So, sound, in sound insulation. Uh, this thing that we now need to bring to our laboratory and fix. This sponge is also a bit shredded, but yeah, we don't mind. It goes like this. And the rest of the things, most obviously, most obviously, go straight down. Uh, not actually straight, straight down, because we need to wobble it a bit on the side to get it to go right past the main bearing or the sin. What are we catching on to? No idea, no idea. Maybe this side? Whoa, another one of those dramatic moments. There we go, it's out. It went fly, it still stinks of angle grinder cutting through these rusty things, but yeah, I just need to remember the right way of putting everything back together because if I put the drive shaft back in and afterwards realize I forgot to put the drive the shifter in, boy, I'm going to have a bad day. I also want to expect ex inspect yes 
the drive shaft. That's one other reason I wanted to remove it. But as you saw, four bolts, it's out. The quite tricky thing is putting it back together because you need somebody to hold it uh, from underneath and pushing it slightly upwards so you can align those nuts onto the studs that are in the lower part. Anyways, moving on. Wow, that was a lot of troubles and struggle and whatnot. So yeah, quite a complicated process removing the manifold, even though the car, the engine is out of the car. So I'm one, in a way, I'm really glad that I'm doing this right now because once I've, I'm done with that, I'll know everything is fine with the car because if I'd had to do this whilst the, the engine is in the car, I think I would lose it. Anyways, I wanted to show you something. I've realized the car is actually double injected. So we have a fuel rail over here, which has the four injectors that go straight into the engine block. And then there's four more injectors sitting on top of the intake manifold, spraying Oh, let me see if I can show you. They are spraying, they, there they are. They are spraying the fuel directly into the intake manifold. So you would guess, you would say, hmm, it should be clean inside. Let me show you. Look at this. Look at just how dirty those valves are. This is the cylinder one. Cylinder, ter cylinder 2, almost same story. Cylinder 3, a bit better. And cylinder 4, unfortunately the last one. Look at this. Also, I think I have struggled enough for today. So I would love to thank you all for watching. Thank you all for sharing, subscribing and everything. If you're not subscribed, please do because if this isn't cool enough, I don't know what is. So yeah, I think uh, subscribe is in order. Uh, thank you so much for watching. We will see you in the next episode. Bye.